Welcome to another edition of Tasker 101 Tutorials brought to you by HollywoodFroto.com. This is lesson 40A and I have been out for a while, just been really busy, working full time, also back in school studying programming, uh, so just haven't had a, time, a lot of time to do a lot of these tutorials. Um, however, I am still using Tasker and you know, mostly what do you use Tasker for? Use it to solve problems. Use something you want to do with your phone or on your phone or your tablet that it doesn't do uh, on its own. And so you create a Tasker task profile scene to fix it or to be able to do what you want to do. And so I've done that and I figured, well, why not share a couple of things that I've done with you guys. It might give you some ideas. Um, all the things that we're going to do today, these are all concepts that have been covered in previous lessons. Um, but I'm just going to show them to you. A um, little bit more abbreviated format to show, just give you some ideas of different things you might want to do, uh, you know, with your phone or your tablet using Tasker. So here you are on Z Launcher. <clears throat> I reviewed Z Launcher. Uh, you want to check out the review of the launcher itself? I'll have a link to that in the description below. But uh, it's a great launcher, um, really cool. But there's one thing I hated about it. You see this little button down here? It's pointless. If I tap that button. All it does is take me into my apps list. Well, guess what? When you're on your home screen, if you swipe left, you go to your apps li list. So, you know, what? I don't need a button to do that. I can just swipe over and go to it. Uh, so it's kind of useless. Another problem I had with Z Launcher, or just a problem in general, is that if I'm using it one-handed, I can't reach my notification panel. It is way up there at the top of my phone. So I have to either use two hands or climb my hand high enough to be able to do it. So I was like, hey, why not give some more functionality to that button? Uh, I've had launchers before that allowed gestures from either any dock icon or some of them from any icon anywhere on your launcher. You could add a swipe up, swipe left, swipe right, etc., etc., and attach it to an action. Well, Tasker has scenes. Scenes can be used as overlays. And Tasker has gesture uh, actions built into scenes. So I'm like, hey, maybe I can just create an overlay, lay it on top of that button, and give myself that functionality, at least until Nokia catches up and adds it into the app. So I'm gonna turn this profile on, and uh, you can see this profile is whenever Z Launcher is active, uh, it turns, there's a task that turns this scene on, and when Z Launcher is inactive, when I go to another app, there's a task that turns the scene off, or destroys scene is technically the way it is in Tasker. Now you see there's a little blue button that kind of appeared over the button that's there. Of course, that's my color. I, I just made it blue with some transparency, but ultimately I can make it clear so that you wouldn't even see it. The launcher would appear just the way that it normally does. Um, however, uh, what it does is it gives me additional functionality. So let's go back to the one-handed hold here. And uh, so now, one-handed, and I want to check out my notification panel and drop it down. I can just swipe down from that button, and there you go. And then you could add, you know, whatever gestures you wanted to add. Uh, you could add a long press action. Uh, I made gesture right. This is just a sample. I made this up, but open a contact. Uh, left. Left sometimes accidentally do that, but if you start in the right place, it opens up. Alarm clock extreme, and if I swipe up, that's a camera shortcuts. And uh, so you can also do a tap, uh, or you can do a long tap. I wouldn't do a tap on this, and the reason is because anytime you swipe from it, you're generally tapping and swiping. So if you had a tap action, you'd probably trigger that before you had a chance to swipe. So I left, I won't use a tap action, but I probably will add a long tap or a long press action. Uh, so anyway, it's kind of cool, right? It adds functionality to a button that was, that was otherwise useless. Uh, now, a couple things to know, if I go over with the Z Launcher, you have three screens. You have the home screen, you have a widget screen, and then you have your apps list screen. You can see when I slide over to my widget screen, that's still there because this is still Z Launcher app, and there's no way to tell Tasker only do this on the Z Launcher app when I first go to the main screen. Uh, it doesn't differentiate. So that's something you just have to take into consideration. For this particular use, that 
being there isn't gonna affect anything. It just means that I can still use it regardless of what screen I'm in, but it doesn't keep me from tapping any of the widgets that are here. And if I'm over on the alphabetical app screen, it doesn't keep me from scrolling through and choosing one of these apps. Uh, and again, the functionality is still there if I wanna use it. So not a big deal, but something to know. Uh, also, when you open another app, sometimes takes a, a second or two before it disappears. Let me open the Dill News app and see. You can see it's still there, now it's disappeared. So it does take a second, there's a little bit of a delay. Same thing can happen when you go to your home screen. Well, that was pretty instant, but sometimes there's a second delay or so. Um, but overall, pretty efficient. Uh, now let's go into Tasker, just so I can show you how I built this. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through it step by step exactly the way I have uh, with things in the past. And that's because all these concepts are covered in previous lessons. I'm just giving you the general idea, giving you some things to play with or work with. So you can see the trigger, the profile is whenever this app is, is active, uh, trigger this task, which shows the scene. And then when the app is inactive, so you're going into any other app, uh, this task destroys the scene. And that's basically on and off. And the scene itself, is over here, a Z button. I'm gonna open that up. And you can see, uh, this is it. Whoa, that's not what I wanna do. That's what I wanna do. Um, so there you go, there's, there's my little dot. And basically, I uh, created the, uh, uh, the scene. You know when you're in a scene, uh, in this mode, uh, you can hit the finger and you can hit resize, and you can resize this however you want to. And you can also hit the property, the menu button, hit properties, and that's where you can choose your background color. And then when you go into edit mode, this is where you're adding stuff to the scene. So I click the plus button, I chose oval. Oval and circle are the same. It's just, it's a circle if the two sides are the same length. I'm, uh, yeah, and it's an oval if one of them is longer than the other. And then uh, once I got the circle on there, I tap the circle and I went in and choose the, chose the color. This is where I chose my semi-transparent light blue color. And then again, you have your tap action, you have a long tap action, and you have strokes. And then for strokes, um, which I did cover this in previous lessons, but just so you know, uh, it's if and then the variable is percent stroke underscore dir which stands for stroke direction and then the choices are up down right left um, I believe you can also do diagonal um, But that's too much. I don't need that many shortcuts on my home screen So for me just up down right left and then length uh, That's the minimum length that the stroke has to be in order to trigger Well, that's a really small dot as you can see so I just chose uh, three, uh, which I believe is pixels. I think it's three pixels is what it stands for. And uh, you have to choose direction any, and then use the variables to uh, set up what happens uh, when it is in a specific direction. So that's the way I set that up, and it uh, gives me those four actions, as well as a long tap action. And then just to show you, uh, Again, this is the editing mode, and then that's what it actually looks like, the actual size. Now you might be thinking, okay, but that's in the middle of your screen. How'd you get it down here? Well, it's always, and when you're editing a scene, it's always in the middle of your screen. Where it displays is determined by the uh, task that shows it. So let's go into the task that shows it, Z button on, and let's look at that. So it's a show scene task. And you can see I have overlay blocking. Overlay means it's on top of everything. Uh, and, you know, Tasker was so far ahead of its time. Pent, the uh, developer of Tasker, when he created scenes and allowed you to set them as overlays long before all these other apps started creating overlay type of situations, Tasker scenes had it. And uh, so overlay blocking, and then here you go, horizontal position and vertical position. So this is how you adjust the position uh, up and down, and you can see I have it down. And you just adjust it, then you go look at it. If it needs to be up a little more, you come back in, adjust it again, uh, change it, 
that's what I did until I had it, you know, right where I wanted it. And uh, that's about it. Uh, show exit button is pointless on something that tiny. Uh, so I didn't have that, uh, but I made sure, again, because it was small, it wasn't like it was gonna block the whole screen and potentially lock me out of something, which is a disaster that can happen with scenes as I've warned you in the past. But anyway, that's uh, once I got it where I wanted it, then it was good to go. And now anytime I go to that home screen and uh, Z Launcher launches, the scene shows up and you can see right there, that was a little bit of a delay. That was like a, almost a three second delay. So it just depends, uh, probably because I was inside Tasker uh, and so leaving Tasker probably delayed a little bit. But generally speaking, it takes about one second um, and it's there and it's just great for uh, little shortcuts, adding functionality. So even if you don't have Z Launcher, uh, you know, maybe you have a different launcher you wanna add some functionality to or maybe not even a launcher, just an app that when that app is open, you want there to be a button or something to uh, uh, do something, uh, then this is an example. And uh, Lesson 40B is gonna kinda carry on that example with some uh, other things uh, on a tablet I have. So come back for that one and you'll see some more ideas. Anyway, that's it for this lesson. Uh, hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, again, I didn't do everything step by step and, and build it together, but that's because all of the concepts that I talked about have been well covered in previous lessons. Just wanted to give you just a little more of an idea of a specific thing that I did. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed it. Anyway, if you do like this video, please click that like button. It does help when you do that. Also, share this video with anyone you know who might be interested. Um, if you have Z Launcher, then share it with Nokia. Maybe they'll build this functionality into the button itself. We won't even have to use Tasker. Uh, but share it with anyone you know who might like it and check out my channel. For if you, this is the first video you've watched, then you definitely need to go back and watch all the other Tasker tutorials to really learn how to use Tasker. And also check out my Android app reviews. And then I have a ton of product reviews, lots of gadgets and accessories for tablets and phones, as well as household products and electronics and dog products and fun stuff. So check all that out as well when you have a chance. Anyway, that's it until next time. So have fun with Tasker.